Hello everyone. I've got a little video to put together here. It's going to be sloppy like all the other ones. Uh, but uh, it's about uh, some accuracy and precision testing that I've done on the X7. Uh, and just wanted to share you, with you my results. So, uh, endless critics on YouTube, lots of ISO experts and stuff like that. Uh, so, my methods are not perfect, my tooling is not perfect, my measuring equipment is not entirely appropriate. Uh, I know all this because I know what it means to actually measure things properly <clears throat> in my day job. Uh, so I've used uh, the tools and equipment I have, methodology uh, that's logical to me, and I think the end results are uh, pretty much undeniable for, for what I've ended up with. And in fact, it's, it's uh, pretty remarkable. But I'll just show you a little bit of what I've done here. So let me try and flip the uh, camera around and uh, I'll show you what I've done. So in my last video, I showed setting up my TTC 200 uh, tool setter. And, you know, I kind of went on a bit of a tangent about you know, my master tool had, you know, three tenths of run out and what did that mean and how could I compensate for it? And I did some, some things that I haven't seen other people really do and I thought there was probably a good reason. But um, for, for the tests that I've done, I've uh, machined a small block and I kept increasing the... Wow, you think I might have had it handy before I started the video, eh? There it is. So, on this small block, um, these two came after for testing bearing fits, but it was this circular pocket and this rectangular pocket. So, uh, I'm dealing in small sizes here, but what I did is I started with a small, small circle and a small square, and not only did I cut them and measure them, every time I went to cut uh, something, I let the machine automatically measure the length and the, the diameter of the tooling before every single cut. And I also didn't use uh, the same tool. I used an eighth inch tool and I used a quarter inch tool. So before every test cut, it re-measured everything. So my results have the added potential error from the measuring system. And I wanted to do that on purpose because I wanted to know how close I could get things uh, letting the machine do everything itself. If I want a 13 millimeter circular pocket, I want to program a 13 millimeter pocket. And if it's a new tool, old tool, I want to just let the machine measure it and go to work. I don't want to have to think about you know, doing my own wear offsets because I know, hey, it cuts this, you know, a little bit undersized or oversized. So I just wanted to see, this is kind of worst case scenario in my opinion, but I wanted to see how it did. To just do a test like this, if you want to talk about accuracy and precision, you would use the same tool and you'd cut the same feature over and over and you'd see, you know, how consistent it was. Uh, using the exact same setup. By throwing in all these extra variables, I've gone outside of what you would consider a normal test. But this, for me, is a more real-world test. Uh, uh, I started off at 8 millimeter, and I ended up actually uh, later in a second test that I'll show you that I repeated. Uh, I ended up at about 14 and a quarter millimeters. And so I was stepping up anywhere between half a millimeter and a quarter of a millimeter each time between measurements. So, like I said, basically auto measure, then run it, measure it, auto measure, run it, measure it. So in the first set of tests I did, I uh, basically, the bottom line is, um, I found out that for me, the worst accuracy that I had was uh, 0 0.03 millimeters, which is 1.1 thousand. So from a target dimension, and that's, uh, I measured each feature in X and in Y. So on one particular instance, it did show up a, a bad um, reading of about 1.1 thou out. 
however, the mean accuracy, which was the average, uh, was point, negative 0 0.02 millimeters. So uh, this is just for circular pockets, by the way, but they seem to be pretty much always um, 0 0.02 millimeters undersized. So I thought that was quite interesting because it was all, it was very consistent. Uh, however, precision was within plus or minus 0 0.01 millimeters in range. So that means I took the absolute highest and the absolute lowest value, and that's the spread between them. But statistically, and using like, you know, proper formula uh, called standard deviation, which is all this calculation here, um, it actually has a, a plus minus of 0 0.00095 millimeters. Um, so anyway, those are meaningful values, just two different ways of, of measuring it. Rectangular pockets, worst was about seven ten thousandths off, 0 0.02 millimeters. Uh, mean accuracy ended up being zero uh, because it all just kind of balanced itself out by fluke. Um, precision was uh, 0 .0, plus or minus 0 0.02 in range and then 0 0.0005 in standard deviation. So the, I found that the circular pocket thing was interesting. It was predictably undersized by um, essentially 7 tenths, um, which was interesting. And I was happy and I was fine with that because that's something you can easily kind of plan around. But I ended up doing something later to see if I could get rid of it. And I, I think I pretty much did uh, just by using a different cycle in the controller. Um, the really interesting thing, so don't forget all these numbers, this isn't just the way you'd normally, this isn't how a manufacturer would test this machine. They'd use the same tool, same feature, uh, same size, and they'd come up with way better numbers. Because don't forget, this all takes into account the actual tool probe as well. You know, because it's changing things every time you measure the tool. And I use different tools. So... This was kind of the, the most interesting thing for me was finding the uh, accuracy and the precision of the tool probe. Bottom line is, I ended up that tool lengths repeated to 0 0.01 millimeters, so about, you know, 3.9, 10 thousandths or better. Uh, so that the worst spread between any of the measurements I did was about 0 0.01 millimeters, which I'm totally fine with. The diameters, however, repeated far better, 0 0.006 millimeters, uh, which to me is amazing. And of course, well, for, for the type of work I do, this is the, this is the side that I'm going to want more uh, precision, accuracy, and repeatability. So again, you know, I made some notes here. Obviously, there's a million better ways to do this. This is just the way I did it. I tried to take care. Uh, with the way I did things to do it, you know, objectively and you know, somewhat scientifically uh, with what I had available. And like I said, this I did this for me. I didn't do this for you guys. I didn't do this for Sil. Um, I just wanted to know because I want to know when I program something, you know, what's my expectation of, of how it's going to come out. Uh, so... In regards, and right after I finished all this, I desperately wanted to do it again because I thought I could do it better. And I wanted to take far better care with the measuring and all the rest of it. But the other thing I wanted to do was use Cycle 832. I've got a 808D Advanced, and that particular controller has Cycle 832. That's their HSM um, cycle uh, with advanced surface, advanced look ahead, compression. Uh, it's all the stuff, you know, that you pay the money, more money for the, the better controller. Now, I was curious to know if it was going to handle the features better, and what I found out was uh, it kind of did. So, I didn't get quite as carried away with all the standard deviation and everything like that, but you can see here, this is the, these, uh, the orange is the rectangular pockets and blue is the circular pockets. And you can see that they kind of both kind of follow each other a little bit. Uh, you can see that in the same runs, they were out kind of in, in similar uh, directions. So uh, what I found was circular deviation averaged about point, uh, undersized 0 0.005 millimeters. And the max 
deviation or error I got in out of anywhere was 0 0.02 millimeters. So I think that's about seven tenths was maximum from one from the worst measurement one way to the worst measurement the other way, the whole spread. So again, average what you're likely to hit um, when you program in a circular pocket for me. I'd average 0 0.005 millimeters undersized from target dimension. Rectangular pockets were better, just like they were in the other test. And I came out with an average of basically 0 0.001 or 0 0.002 millimeters undersized. And since these are both undersized, I feel like some of that's probably got to do with my calibration of that tool probe. You know, 0 0.002 millimeters is well, I can't measure it. I don't have the appropriate tools to measure something that small. So I think considering they're both like that, I think that it probably has a little bit to do with how I calibrated it. And you know, my goodness, I'm okay with being out that amount. Like I said, I don't even have the appropriate tools to, to measure for that. My maximum error on a rectangular feature was 0 0.01, negative 0 0.01, millimeters so three tenths i was off in worst case scenario out of any of my measurements and don't forget that's not just repeating the same cut same tool that's doing a tool measuring cycle in between every single cut so all of that error that would add up and start piling onto each other didn't it is just uh it's you, incredible in my opinion i'm incredibly pleased with these results and for me so what started it was these bearings you know i've got some some stuff that i'm trying to do and uh it's got bearing pockets in some of these plates and uh i wanted to know how accurately i could program a fit like a bearing or a shaft fit uh interference fit clearance fit all that kind of stuff and turns out um, you know, when I, when I did this one, I was going in, my steps were point, point zero zero five millimeters and I was testing the fit and I ended up going, so one, it was, it felt too tight. The bearing didn't want to go in. And then the next step, it kind of felt too loose. <laughs> so I just programmed the in-between, which is point zero zero two five and it was a super snug fit. Like I'll probably back that off some, but it is, it's pretty amazing to be messing around with um, amounts that low between, between runs to see, to see how things fit. So anyway, that's it. That's my quick video on uh, my initial results on the machine's accuracy and precision. So like I said, I get it, you know, my tools aren't the absolute best, but I'm not, this isn't a published result. This isn't ISO 9001. It is what it is. It's the best I could do. As you can tell, I took some amount of care and thought into how I performed this. And for me, these results are meaningful and maybe they will be for you too. And yeah, that's basically all I had to share with you, I think. All right, talk to you later. Bye.